Hey, welcome back here at five. We are looking live at the Beltline right now. It is hot out. Another hot day is coming to us tomorrow as well. Meteorologist Kevin Corvo will have your first alert forecast coming up next. But first, our GOP debate coverage continues. NBC 15's Elizabeth Wattis joins us in the studio with a nationally recognized scholar and pollster and a familiar name and face here in Wisconsin. Yes, Maria, as we prepare for the first Republican presidential debate tomorrow in Milwaukee, Marquette University has been looking at who's the favorite amongst voters. The director of the Marquette Law Poll, Charles Franklin, joining us now. Charles, thank you so much for being part of our coverage today. Thank you. Good yes, to be here. Yes, I want to get right into it um, with polling. We know that former President Donald Trump is the front runner. He's not going to be at the debate tomorrow. Does this give another candidate an opportunity to kind of step up or does it not even matter because because he's so far ahead. I, I think actually him not being there allows the others to have more of an opportunity to step up and get a moment that maybe can help their campaigns. If Donald Trump was there, he'd undeniably be the center of attention and mm -hmm. would make himself the center of the show. So in that sense, his absence is a gift to everyone else. I'm sure there are gonna be a lot of questions about Donald Trump tomorrow night, but it is a chance for the eight people on the stage to try to make that uh, what would really be the first impression with a lot of Republican voters. On the flip side of that, is it also an opportunity for someone to really fall off? <laughs> it is, and you can do it in two ways. You can flub a question, that's always embarrassing, but you can also, if you're one of those 1% or 2% candidates, simply fail to make an impression, mm. and this was your one and only chance to do that. So there is definitely a downside risk as well as an upside if you do manage to make an impression. And Charles, in the Marquette Law Poll, you don't only look at candidates, you also look at the issues that people care about. What do Wisconsinites want to hear about at that yeah. debate tomorrow? Yeah, we are a public opinion poll, and so we want to know what people think. Uh, the infl inflation and the economy are almost always near the top. Inflation's come down a bit, but people are still worried about it. But then you see sharp differences between the parties. Republicans much more concerned about immigration and the southern border. Democrats much more concerned about gun violence and abortion and other issues as well. But it's really striking how the two parties largely are concerned about different issues maybe with the exception of, the in, of inflation and the economy. And watching debates, um, I don't know if it's just me, people seem to be more engaged in debates lately. It's kind of changed with people interrupting each other, <clears throat> kind of more of an entertainment spectacle than you know, listening to the issues. Have you seen more people tuning into the debates? And if so, why are they tuning in? Tuning in fluctuates, and I think it has to be said, with, with Donald Trump not on the stage, that'll probably lower mm -hmm. the audience. Sure. But on the other hand, we've had bigger fields of candidates, so there's more rock'em, sock'em action, if you will, from debates. People are, to a significant degree, tuning in, but they also follow the coverage in news after the day, the day after, as well as social media and, you know, conversations at the local bar. A lot more to come even after the debate. Charles, thanks for being here. And you're going to be covering um, everything with us tomorrow, again, live in Milwaukee. So stick with us. We'll see you live in Milwaukee there. Our debate coverage will begin for the big day.